Welcome to the Sunday morning services. This is provided by Samaritan's Homeless Services. We make the homeless right where they are. This lesson today, once again, as we focus in Sunday Live, we go to the word of God for our strength, for our peace, for our joy. And it is our hope and prayer that as we study the word of God today, that we will be a stronger people, that we will be a more faithful people, and that we will stand together, stand together, believing in the word of God and anticipating that great hope that awaits all who are faithful. The lesson today comes from Luke chapter 5, verses 29 to 31. I'm going to read from the scriptures and we're going to draw some conclusions. The topic of the lesson today is God shops goodwill. That may be surprising to a lot of people out there, but God shops goodwill. And I'm going to share with you from the word of God some thoughts about how God shops goodwill. And we all know about goodwill because there are a lot of good things in goodwill. And we find a lot of new life in goodwill. So bear with me as we study God's word today. The Bible says, Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at, at his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belonged to the sect, they complained to the disciples. Why? Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I think there's a key verse there. That last verse where Jesus answers the question. Why are you eating with sinners? Why are you hanging out with folks that don't believe like we believe and walk and talk like we talk? Why are you amongst them, Jesus? And Jesus, Yeshua said this. He responds and says, the healthy don't need a doctor. It's the sick. And he says, I have come not to call the righteous, the righteous are already there. I have not come to call the righteous. I have come to call the sinner to repentance. My friends, God shops at goodwill. When you look at goodwill, we all are aware of what goodwill is. I love shopping there. I go into goodwill and I see much of what is in goodwill has been tossed. It's been given up. It's been donated. But when you walk those aisles, you find stuff that, I mean, it's unbelievable the amount of stuff that people have donated that they no longer want. Cast out, tossed out, thrown away, trash, junk to people. But Goodwill can take that and recreate it and make it anew. So when I walk those aisles, I see stuff that's sorted, stuff that's reusable, stuff that if you purchase it, it finds a place in your house and in your family. It's new life for old stuff. Amen. When you go into Goodwill and you shop and you find something, you bring new life to old stuff. Something that was tossed out, thrown away, is now usable again. Goodwill becomes a place of second chances. Amen. It becomes a place of second chances for those things that nobody want, wanted and those things that people tossed out. Well, I submit to you this morning that you and I, we are goodwill. Amen? We are goodwill. When you look at your life, when you look at my life, when you look at the things that we've said, the things that we've done, the life that we've led, we've been tossed out. We have made mistakes. We are used up. We are broken. We are old. But yet, yet, 
there is still life left in us. Amen. While some have decided that they want to find themselves on that garbage truck, on their way to be buried in a landfill, spiritual landfill, some of us make our way to goodwill. And when we make our way to goodwill and we're sorted and we're placed on that shelves, our little broken, unwanted selves, God walks by and God can see something good in us. I may be slightly cracked. I may be chipped. I may have a broken piece. Something in me may not be functional. Something in me may need a battery to be re-energized. But I can be repaired. I can be fixed. I can be reused. We are goodwill, my friends. Because sin separates us from God. You know, all Jesus wanted to do was to bring his light to that group. People said, why is he hanging around with sinners? How are sinners going to know what light is if they don't have an example of light right before them? Jesus was in their presence. His light, his life, and his example shone brightly among the broken. His example and his words of wisdom sounded against the hearts of those who were broken and in sin. Even when he was questioned and criticized and challenged, he gave the answer and he said, this is why I'm here. Those that are not sick don't need a physician. Those that are sick need a physician. I am not here for the righteous. I am here to call sinners to repentance. I'm here to fix the broken. I'm here to show the sinner the way. I'm here to die for the sins of the world. I am at goodwill. You see, the world is God's goodwill. And we, part of the world, are in need of God. And he walks through that store. Does he have to? No, God can go to the mall and shop and get the very spiritual best. God can go to Saks Fifth Avenue or Macy's spiritually and get the best of the best, the cream of the crop. But that's not what God wants. God says, my invitation is not only open to the person that's at Macy's, spiritual Macy's. It's not only open to the person that's shopping at spiritual Target. But I am at the goodwill because this is where the broken are. I am at goodwill because this is where the chipped are. I am at goodwill because this is where the cracked are and the donated are. And those who need a second chance are. You see, the righteous, the faithful, they're not in need of a physician. They are marked. They are individuals that are focused and walking the walk. But God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of repentance. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine. You would think that people would say, well, 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 God, he's not concerned about goodwill. He's only going to Macy's. He's only going to the mall. He's going to go into those, those rich high stores. God is in goodwill. God is in goodwill and he's looking for you and he's looking for me because he says we are sick and because we are spiritually sick and our hearts are dark and we love darkness more than light, God is walking the aisles of goodwill because he's saying I want you and you mean something to me. I care about you and I love you. There are others who may have tossed you out. There are others who may have thrown you away. There are others who may not care about you, but God says I care about you. We need to understand that. 
God is in goodwill looking for you and looking for me because he has not thrown us away. He has not cast us out. He has not buried us in a spiritual landfill. He says, you are important to me. You are special to me. You are a diamond in the rough, and I'm going to shape you. I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to fix you. I'm going to make it right with you. My friends, we need to be loving some God. God has not cast us out. We may look bad. Things may be hopeless. We may even consider ourselves as junk, ready for a trip to the spiritual landfill. And a lot of people are doing it. They are throwing their lives away. God is looking for them in goodwill. But they have decided to go on to the spiritual landfill, to be buried and thrown out of the kingdom of God, to be cast into the lake of fire. They have made that decision and they continue to do what they want to do and ruin and wreck their lives. When God says, come to goodwill, get on the shelf so I can find you, my friends. God is telling us, I shop goodwill because all of my creation is beautiful. All of my creation is pretty. All of my creation is good. All of my creation is useful. And you are the only one that, that decides that you're not worth it. My friend, God says you are worth it. God says you mean something to me. I shop goodwill because I'm looking for that humble soul who's willing to say, I, Lord, want to come to you. Yes, we are used and broken. Yes, we love darkness more than light. Read John chapter 1 and Romans chapter 1. But in spite of our desire to love darkness, in spite of our desire to love sin, God still shops at goodwill looking for you. He's looking for that right person who is standing on that shelf looking for an answer, wanting to be released, wanting to find freedom. God is looking for you. The answer is are you looking for God? God is walking through goodwill. He's walking through the clothing aisle. He's walking through the spiritual electronic aisle. He's walking through the glass delicacies aisle. He's walking through the shorts and the pants and the toys and the books. He's looking for that one special soul that will stand up and say, Lord, pick me. Pick me. When God comes in with his spiritual cart across that aisle shopping, you're standing there saying, God, pick me. You want a book, pick me. You want these shoes, pick me. You want this glass, pick me. God is walking through goodwill and he's saying, listen, where are you? Where are you? I can fix you. We may be jumped ready for the landfill, but God, but God sees something in us that we can't see in ourselves. But God extends his will and his grace to us. Look, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. His Son in Luke chapter 5 said, I come not for the righteous, but I come what? To seek and save that which is lost. Luke 19.10. Oh, he's walking through goodwill. And he's seeking. And he's looking. And he's shopping and he's trying to find you and he's trying to find me. But the question is, do you want to be found and do you want to be saved? So many people say, no, I don't want to be found and I don't want to be saved. So many people say, I want to go to that spiritual landfill. But I make the appeal to you. God shops at goodwill. He sees the value of your soul. He sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. God shops at goodwill. He's looking for you, not for the righteous, but he's calling the sinner to repentance. You need to jump in the car. Amen. You need to jump in the car because he sees something in you that you can't see in yourself. And he sent his son to die for your sins. My friends, there's nothing more important. We may not see it. We may not understand it. The Pharisees didn't see it and understand it. Jesus, why are you hanging with sinners? Why are you running with them folk? Let me tell you something. Jesus says, I'm running with them folk because I came to seek and save that which is lost. These gentlemen and ladies are lost. 
And I am out here trying to show them a light, trying to show them an example, trying to show them the way, trying to bring them to the truth. That's why Jesus was out there. And that's why God shops at Goodwill. He shops at Goodwill because he sees value in you. Even when you can't see it in yourself, he can shine you up. He can fix you. He can straighten you out. We just have to give him a chance. So we need to be on that shelf saying, hey, pick me. Lord, put me in the car. My life is bad. My life is hopeless. But I know I'm not junk. You made me, Lord. I know you can fix me. I know you can recreate me. I know you can use me. And my friends, that's the thing that many of us need to understand. God can use you right where you are. You can make a difference in someone's life. You can tell your story and save others from the mistakes that you've made, from the life that you've led. You have a whole young generation out there waiting to hear your story. They're going to walk the same walk. They're going to make the same mistakes. But if you stand there like Jesus stood in the midst of those publicans and sinners, and you are the light, and you are the example, and you put the message out there, you can save a soul from walking through the fires of hell, my friends. You have a story to tell with your life. That's why God shops at Goodwill, because we have a story to tell with our lives. And we, with our lives, we can tell the story of how God saved us, how he rescued us, how he made a difference, how he changed us. My friend, that's why God shops at Goodwill. When you're sitting there with that second chance, a person looks at you and they say, wow, that's beautiful. Well, you know, I used to be in Goodwill. My friends, God has a way to use all of us in a positive way. And many people need to see this. You may see yourself as unsalvageable. God sees you as salvageable. You may see yourself as unrepairable, but God can repair you. You may see yourself as I'm not useful to anybody, but God sees you as useful because your testimony and your life and how he changes you, how he helps you, how he redevelops you, how he has blessed you, when you tell that story to someone, you can help save their souls. Because right then, they decide they don't want to go to that spiritual landfill. Right then, they decide your story has had such an impact on them that no matter how bad I was, no matter what I did, no matter how much I messed up, God still takes me. Just like that peace in goodwill. And he can shine me up. He can mold me. He can make me after his will. He can restore me. He can give me that light. My friends, the Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Matthew 5. It says that we are the light of the world. We have an opportunity to do great things for Jesus and great things for God. But we have to realize God shops at goodwill. We've got to realize that I've still got value. You know, when I think about God shopping at Goodwill, and no matter how bad I messed up, his goodwill says, Romans 5, 8, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That while we were yet sinners, God still makes a way for us. While we are in our uh, beaten down uh, state, God still loves us. We have the opportunity to walk away and start over. There are many places where you can get a second chance. But this is one of them. God shops in goodwill and in goodwill he says, I will give you second chance. I will breathe life into you. I will shine you up. I will set you just like that diamond sitting in the, 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 the diamond store. You will look very good. And your example will save many. My friends, just like the secondhand stuff in Goodwill, God can help you and me find a new home. God can help you and me have a fresh start. Because with God, you can find the second chance. With God, you can find new hope. With God, you can find peace. With God, 
you can get a new home, just like that stuff with Goodwill. You go through the checkout, Goodwill says thank you very much, and you roll home and you say, oh, look what I found in Goodwill. Let me tell you something. It's quite amazing. God rolls out that spiritual goodwill. He looks in, look what I found. I'm going to make that guy a preacher. Look what I found. I'm going to make her a speaker. I'm going to make him an example. I'm going to raise him up a prophet. Listen, God travels goodwill. He finds those spiritual bargains and he brings them back. He shines them up and he says, look what I found. This is a bargain and a bargain indeed. My friends, we need to be happy today that Jesus was amongst publicans and sinners because it tells you and me that we have value. It tells you and me that we have hope. It tells you and me that all is not lost. God shops at goodwill and he's looking for you and he's looking for me. And he has demonstrated his goodwill to us that while we're yet sinners, he died for us. We know that having believed that if our earthly tabernacle is dissolved, that we're no longer here, that we have a house in heaven not made with hands. Because Jesus said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. All that he has garnered in goodwill, from goodwill, all he has recreated anew, all he has repaired, all he has given a second chance, he is building a mansion for you and for me. We have nothing to worry about. No matter what happens in this world or in this life, God has demonstrated his good will to us by sending Jesus. And all we have to do is decide that we're going to follow him. All we have to do is decide that we're going to show that love and thankfulness to him. Because I'm going to tell you something. God shops at goodwill. Nobody does it better. All that has been tossed out, cast out, and thrown away for naught. God can take it, renew it, refresh it, forgive it, and it looks 100% better. 100% better than new than before it was purchased. That's what God can do. You might be feeling secondhand, but God says, I made you new. You might be thinking you have no hope, but Jesus says different. I come to call a sinner to repentance. Luke 19, 10. God wants us to be saved. God shops goodwill, and he's looking for you, and he's looking for me. And I hope, trust, and pray that you make yourself present, accounted for, and available as God walks those aisles of goodwill. And that he finds you. And that you're reunited in a relationship with Jesus Christ. The message is clear. God shops goodwill. He doesn't want you to be lost. He wants you to be saved. You are as important to God as one who shops at Macy's. You are as important to God as one who shops at Target or Walmart. You might be cast out a second hand as you feel, but you are important enough for God to come to you. He's in that goodwill. You're on that shelf. You see that car come by, you jump in it. God shops at goodwill, and he's looking for you today. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful to you for this day and the blessings. We appreciate all that you do for us, Lord. Appreciate what you provide. And we just pray, Father, that you'll be with us this day. Help us to understand that we are valuable, and help us to understand that you have not forsaken us.